especially in these times where everybody's having a rough time at things. Look, I'm not getting broke back on y'all, but hey, love you, brother. I love you, brother. Hey y'all, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm. And if you don't know who this guy is, go check him out at Metcalf Mills on YouTube. I don't know what that was. Anyway, um, hey, here's a little update. We're gonna talk about a couple of things and Justin's gonna provide a little historical context to what we're gonna do today. But just as a little side note, Coco the Bull is down there. His first day, we should have had him out a while ago out on pasture. But we didn't do that because we had too many irons in the fire. We've tried to get him over a couple of times. And, you know, it wasn't until he got used to me and really loving that bucket before he decided he was going to go over here. So there he is down there, loving life, doing what bulls do. And he was a quick study. He was examining the sheep in the distance and said, okay, I think we can be cool. We can be friends. But he's really digging it, and he's taking to it better than I ever thought. So now that he's out of the barn, this is part of what's been holding us up on a few projects but we got him out, but we still got these pigs in here. And that's where Justin's going to provide a little bit of historical context. How you doing today, brother? Doing great. How y'all doing? Good, good. You bring back a bunch of bowls, huh? Yeah, you know, Michelle's always filling them up and sending them up the road. And we're awful grateful for that. Y'all eat up all the soup? Not all of it, but we're working on it. Justin, if y'all watch his uh, video the other day, he did, he was harvesting potatoes and he... When we sat there telling him about how Michelle's uh, potato soup recipe is, um, he just dropped some off. He didn't even come to the house. He just dropped them off on the porch or something like that. Michelle found them. And so there you go. She made her famous potato soup. Did y'all like oh, it? Oh, my gosh. It's just exactly what you said. It was everything. So. Like in the middle of a York peppermint patty commercial. Oh, gosh. So y'all check it out. Here's the poly wire where the, where the bull was. We basically had him in here. We basically started him off with the woven wire. It's just jankied in there. If you go back and watch that video. And we put poly wire on the inside of it. He's such a quick study. He got zapped a couple of times and realized, okay, that's not cool. Then we expanded it up the mountain. He was cool with that, ate everything in there, including the young Chinese silver grass. But when it's mature, he won't touch it, which we expected. Now, these pigs are another matter altogether. We're gonna swing over here. Check this out, y'all. We got inside there everything pigs love when we feed them in the morning. We got rice, we got beans. We got, uh, there's beef in there. I mean, eggs, pigs go nuts over raw eggs, but they will leave every single bit of it. I just showed Justin a minute ago. When you throw comfrey over this fence, is that pretty freaky or what? What yeah, do you think about that? That's crazy. They, they just, drop what they they're doing. After it. I mean, they nothing else in the world. Yeah, they drop all the things they love inside that feed pan just to come out here and get this comfrey. Um, you know, a part of the reason I think why is we were giving them charcoal, and we still do. We give them charcoal whenever they want it. We also give them kelp. But, folks, here's what we discovered. Because this comfrey bioaccumulates, it's a dynamic accumulator because it's putting those roots down deep taking all those minerals and bringing them up. They barely, I can show you inside, they barely touch the charcoal anymore and they barely touch the uh, kelp, which is their primary minerals. When we give them this comfrey, they stop everything and they go straight to eating. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty incredible. Now these guys are really fattening up. They're looking good. So Justin, we got them up here. We're running them up the side of this mountain and they're gonna keep going up and they're gonna go over, as you know. And this is ultimately gonna be the area of the um, earth ship. Now here in the mountains, tell me, and we've talked about it briefly before, but we got a, new, a lot of new people on. How would it traditionally be done as far as running pigs? Well, I thought about it a lot since seeing how y'all do this. And most of the people or all the people would just put them in a small pen and fatten them to butcher. They never let them run out. And, you know, I believe if an animal's happy, it's going to yield a whole lot better product or whatever it yields. And I thought, too, before, years ago, they would sometimes run hogs in the woods when the chestnut mash was falling. All mm. these, this, this is chestnut mountain here. It was covered in big chestnut trees, and the ground would just be covered in chestnuts from what I've heard. And they would run those hogs on that chestnut mash. And that's the only thing close to what y'all do that I've ever heard of, but 
You know, we've been here almost 200 years, my family, and I've never heard of anybody doing it like y'all do. And it's just amazing to me your technique for this. And if you've never had hogs and you're starting out with uh, the folks at Permapasture, that's the best. That's the best way you can start out, in my opinion. It just amazes me every time I think about it, how different it is and how well it works. And it's working kind of in harmony, I guess you could say. Well, these are happy. I mean, they're out roaming around. And from what I've seen on these guinea hogs you had, all that fat on there, I mean, I don't know what it is if people just wanted to have more control over what they were doing. I've thought about it a lot, but it just, it don't make sense after seeing how y'all do this and the benefits to everything. But that, that's permaculture, right? Well, it is, but also I think the big benefit is, you know, 100 years ago, they didn't have the benefit of a hot fence. Right. And then Joel Salatin did a long, long uh, story about how this was able to help management in a big way. So maybe folks are just kind of tied to the old way of doing, but maybe. I can't. But I can't help but, um, folks, this is this is why I enjoy, I mean, we're like brothers from way back. And we hit it off right from the very beginning. But he's providing, we both love history. In fact, everybody here does. Got quite a history lesson the other day with my mother-in-law talking about these quilts, things I didn't know about. But, you know, the way he was describing here, letting them loose here on Ch Chestnut Mountain, do you know to this day the most prized pork on planet Earth comes from, the, if I'm not mistaken, from the Iberian region. I've actually had some of that pork, folks, and it, it was unbelievable. Not as good as a guinea hog, in my opinion, but it was still fantastic pork. And what do they do? Joel Ta Salatin told me personally that the people that prune those acorns, because they set them loose, they basically starve them almost till they're dead, let them loose on these acorns, they fatten up, and then they put them under the knife, put them in the freezer, and make the world's best prosciutto and everything out of it. But it's funny yeah, that same technique that's now being done for time since the Roman Empire, you're telling me was done right here on these mountains. That's how they would have done it from back in the day. Yeah. That's something else, yeah, folks. It's, it's amazing. And that, that reminded me what you said about fences. There's an old saying around in the mountains that your fences need to be pig tight. <laughs> so. <laughs> so there it goes. I mean, folks, this is this is what we're getting at here. You got a historical construct from a man, Justin. And you're looking at the way we currently do it. So you can use, you can bring the bear. Nothing wrong if you want to run them inside a woven wire, something like that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can put down deep bedding. Um, a lot of people do it. It's very antiseptic. It's very cool. But at least we're able to get these guys out. Before Justin terraced that area up there, it was every bit as thickety and nasty as everything you see up the hill behind me. These pigs went through, did all the work. Folks, I know we covered this, but we got a lot of new people out here, and you're seeing the new iteration of it. These little pigs are going to get out here and do exactly what them guinea hogs did. They're going to fatten up. They're eating a fraction less. Well, I don't. I haven't really put the numbers to it, but honestly, they eat considerably less um, than if we just had them in a static environment. They're going to eat a lot more. But folks, going back to that comfrey, we feed them less in terms of mineral. In fact, I can show I can show it to you. Before we got them outside and eating comfrey. They were going through mineral. They were eating about five pounds of charcoal a day mm -hmm. and eating up all the minerals. Since we started giving them comfrey, which we, we do with all of our animals, they've been going nuts on it. So, folks, as a little, I guess, shameless plug, we do sell it, comfrey root, at our website. If you want some, we got it for you. If you want our bone sauce deer repellent, who this good man came up with our slogan, What's it called? <laughs> on the deer on the deer sauce? On the deer bone sauce? Billy's bone sauce. This stuff kicks buck. <laughs> How cool and is it that? Does. <laughs> it works. Yes, so if you need does. any of that, folks, check it out the website. But honestly, go check out the astonishing, astounding history. And honestly, seeing history put to work at his his site. I've said before that when everybody finds out what he's doing, they're not gonna watch us or anybody else anymore because it is truly astonishing. Justin, I can't thank you enough for the historical lesson and showing us how things were, um, how things shaped up years ago and how we're overlaying what we know and trying to work in harmony with it. Tell everybody what you got going, well, what you got planned. It was my pleasure, and I just want to say that I thank you all so much for all your encouragement and all y'all's help, and I just can't say enough about how much I appreciate y'all. And Yeah, I've got some stuff coming up. I do a lot of work on grain mills. When I can, I don't have a lot of uh, time right now to do that because of different things going on. But 
uh, try to do a, as much farming as I can and some work with some grain and corn and as well as grain meals. So, and a few other interesting things. So, well, folks, I'm going to end this video, especially in these times where everybody's having a rough time at things. Look, I'm not getting broke back on y'all, but hey, love you, brother. I love you, brother. <laughs> Appreciate you. We'll see y'all next time.